Hey, it's Mr. Shrum, and we are going to look at circulatory and heart issues. And this is always, I have the most fun looking at things that can go wrong, horribly, horribly wrong with the human body. So here we go. What can go wrong with your heart? Well, the circulatory system includes the heart and the blood vessels. Problems associated with the circulatory system may target either of these structures. And in this lesson, you will examine a circulatory issue, namely atherosclerosis and a heart issue known as cardiomyopathy. So atherosclerosis, well, as we've learned in Previous lessons, arteries are elastic, but sometimes the walls of the arteries may harden and thicken. And that is what is known as arteriosclerosis, or also known as this other name. So we, we see the steps right here. A healthy artery with no plaque buildup, looking good. Then we have athero, uh, atheroma intracellular lipid accumulation. Oh no. And we have fibroatheroma. We have multiple lipid cores. So we got one there and then one there. And then look at this, thrombosis. And that is arterial surface defect, likely hematoma hemorrhage. That's, that's this is not what you wanna see, okay? So let's look at why that occurs. Atherosclerosis is a specific type of arteriosclerosis. It is caused when the walls of the arteries become hard due to, due to deposits of fats and cholesterol. These deposits are known as plaque. The plaque can become so thick that it actually restricts blood flow. So this can build up so much that blood can't get through. And the risk factors, it's a gradual and progressive disease. It usually begins by damage to the tunica intima, the inner layer of the arteries. And this damage can occur as a result, as a result of high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, smoking. After the damage occurs, platelets will clump together at the injury site causing the arterial wall to thicken. Over time, plaque also attaches at the injury site and then hardens. This results in a narrowing, narrowing of the artery and that constricts blood flow to the organs and tissues it serves. So it's a, it's a root cause problem. Uh, the, the injured artery uh, uh, gets platelets to come and try to heal it. That thickens the wall. Plaque begins to attach to the same spot and then it hardens. The artery is getting narrower and narrower more narrow and more narrow until blood flow is compromised and some organs may begin to fail because of that. So how do you treat that? Well, lifestyle cho choices like a healthy diet and exercise can be the best treatment. However, oftentimes more intensive treatments may be required like medication, angioplasty, or bypass surgery. And there are several different types of medication that can help slow down the progression or even reverse the effects of atherosclerosis. We have cholesterol medication, also known as statins, that either increases your good cholesterol levels or decreases the bad cholesterol levels. We have antiplatelet platelet medication, also known as 
aspirin or things like aspirin, that reduces the risk of platelets sticking together. Then you have beta blocker medication. That decreases blood pressure and your heart rate. And that in turn reduces the demands on the heart. So one uh, checks your cholesterol, keeps that in check. One reduces the risk of platelets sticking together. And then we have the beta blocker and that decreases your blood pressure. So depending on what type of um, issues you're already having, one may be better to use than the other. And in severe cases of atherosclerosis, the tissue or organ the artery serves may be threatened. So a more intensive procedure may be required to save those tissues or organs. Angioplasty is when a doctor threads a long, thin tube called a catheter into the blocked artery. Then a second catheter with a small deflated balloon on the tip is inserted. Once it reaches the narrowed artery, the balloon is inflated, pressing the deposits to the arterial wall. Then a mesh tube known as a stent is, or a stent, is placed to keep the artery open. All right, so we're gonna be using a balloon to keep the artery open. And if that's not possible, the doctor may decide the best option is a bypass surgery. Arterial bypass surgery is when the doctor uses another blood vessel from somewhere else in the body or a tube made from synthetic fabric to direct blood flow around the blocked vessel. So ideally you wanna prevent all this anyway. So how do you prevent atherosclerosis? By making healthy lifestyle choices such as these, can help prevent atherosclerosis. If you're smoking, the number one healthy thing you can do is to stop smoking. If you are not currently exercising, you should look into some type of exercise that you enjoy, explore, and then make it a habit to do that every week or so, all right? Some of us may like to lift weights, some of us like to run, even walking is great for you. Um, and you don't have to do super intense exercise either. Yoga, Pilates, anything that gets your body moving, really. Eat healthy foods for the most part. I know uh, when I was in high school, I became more aware of the food I was eating And as long as you're more aware of what you're eating, for the most part, it's okay during the holidays to have, um, you know, good food, of course. But there are ways to um, reduce the amount of processed food or, or food that has too much added sugar or added fats. And, and finding ways to make those same things you like but in a healthier manner at home, uh, it is possible. And maintaining a healthy weight is always a good idea. So smoking, exercising, healthier food will tend to lead towards a more healthy weight for you. Now, cardiomyopathy, Cardiomyopathy is a disease of the heart muscle that makes it harder to pump blood to the rest of the body. And there are three types of cardiomyopathy, dilated, hypertrophic, restrictive. And those show you the different um, versions of this. Now, dilated cardiomyopathy 
is when the left ventricle enlarges so much that it leads to less force when pumping blood to the body. This is the most common type of cardiomyopathy. Risk factors for dilated cardiomyopathy. It can occur at any age, but usually middle age is when it develops. It can also occur as a result of infection, chemotherapy, or alcohol use. It occurs more often in males than females. There is a possibility of hereditary links associated with this type of cardiomyopathy as well. And hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is when the walls of the left ventricle thicken, which shrinks the chamber of the heart. It also causes the heart to stiffen. Both of these characteristics affect the heart's ability to deliver blood to the body. Risk factors for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. It can also occur at any age, but it's more severe if it occurs during your childhood. Most cases of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy have a hereditary link. And it has been associated with a genetic mutation. And lastly, restrictive cardiomyopathy is when the heart becomes less elastic and more rigid. So that means the heart is not able to expand and fill with as much blood in between your heartbeats. It is the most rare type of cardiomyopathy. Risk factors of restrictive cardiomyopathy. It can occur at any age, but most common in older people. It can occur for no known reason, which is known as idiopathic. Um, and it may occur due to diseases in other parts of the body that affect the heart. So risk factors, all three types of cardiomyopathy share these risk factors, obesity, alcoholism or alcohol abuse, illicit drug use, drug abuse, cancer treatments, diabetes, thyroid disorders. How do you treat these uh, versions of cardiomyopathy? Well, it depends on which type you have. Individuals with dilated cardiomyopathy are treated with specific medications, surgically implanted devices, or both. Possible options for a surgically implanted device are a pacemaker or an ICD. For dilated cardiomyopathy, a special pacemaker is used. It works by triggering both ventricles to contract at the same time. An ICD stands for implantable cardioverter defibrillator. It is about the size of a box of matches and is implanted in the individual's chest. The ICD monitors heart rhythms and delivers electric shocks when needed to control abnormal heartbeats. There it is right there. Medication is the preferred treatment for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. 
If medication doesn't work, then it may require more invasive procedures. For example, the doctor may do an open heart surgery to remove some of the thickened walls of the septum, the tissue between the two ventricles. This is known as a septal myectomy. So myectomy, ectomy means they're taking something out, septal myectomy, they're taking out some of the septum. Treatment for restrictive cardiomyopathy, the rarest form of cardiomyopathy, is to relieve some of the symptoms. So recommendations include monitoring weight daily, calculating salt and water intake, taking a diuretic, that is a pill or some type of substance that causes you to urinate more frequently. That in turn helps reduce the amount of fluid retained in the body. How do you prevent cardiomyopathy? Oftentimes you can't prevent it from occurring. Um, however, heart healthy habits can help reduce your risk. Exercise regularly, eat healthy foods rich in vitamins and minerals, reduce high blood pressure, maintain a healthy weight, don't abuse alcohol or illicit drugs. That's uh, generally a good idea. And that's the end of the heart issues and cardiovascular issues. So that is the end of our circulatory system lesson before our, our uh, semester ends. I hope you enjoyed learning about this. And if you're interested in more uh, information about this topic, check out the field trips tab in the anatomy unit for section three. And you can learn all about these things. The heart is a very important uh, organ. So lots is Lots of things have been written about that organ, the heart. And that's about it. Uh, good luck, everybody. Have a great rest of your week. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.